Good morning, everybody. Um, delighted to see you here um, for the early start for the Film Alumni Festival. We're going to talk today about how digital learning can help employees thrive and also enable organizations retain talent. Um, I'm Anna Wood, I'm Managing Director of Cambridge Online Education, and I'm just going to ask my um, panelists to introduce themselves in turn. Dominica. Uh, hello, hello everyone. So I'm here on this panel because I'm an alumni of one of the CAO courses, Research Commercialization and Technology Transfer Office. So I'll be sharing my experience here. Uh, I am, my job is I'm a venture operations and ecosystem lead in uh, Cambridge Future Tech. Uh, so we are a deep venture builder. So the content of the course was very relative to my work. Uh, from professional, basically, uh, my experience, I work as paralegal, business developer, and a bookkeeper, bookkeeper and I am a graduate of um, law school in Slovakia and international, international relations from Florida. Thank you, Dominika. Um, Sue? Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sue Jones. I'm uh, an associate professor at the University of Cambridge. I'm a neuroscientist and I'm the course lead on one of the online courses called Functional Neuroanatomy. And we launched in April and we're about to do our third run of the course. Thanks Sue. And Jason? Thanks Anna, I'm Jason Mellet. I am the course lead for a Cambridge Advanced Online course titled Entrepreneurship, Employee-Led Innovation. We're just getting ready to launch next week. It's been a fantastic ride setting it up. Um, my other hat is CEO of StartCodon. We're an accelerator venture builder based here in Cambridge, setting up new startups in the healthcare and life science space. Thanks, Jason. And Laura? Hi, everyone. My name is Laura. Uh, I'm a senior learning designer, so I work with uh, subject matter experts and academics like Sue and Jason to gather the content and help create the online courses. Thank you, everybody. So I'm just going to give a very brief introduction to the Cambridge Advanced Online program, and then I'm going to start with a few questions for the panelists, and then we'd like to open it up to the attendees. So uh, Cambridge Advance Online, it's a, it's a joint venture between the university and Cambridge University Press and Assessment. It consists of six to eight week fully online short courses aimed at graduate professionals. And the program was created to help the university become a leading provider of online professional education by 2025. So Cambridge Online Education, uh, led by me, is based within Cambridge University Press and Assessment and is the unit responsible for partnering with academic departments to create and launch these courses. First three courses were launched in sep last September. Programs sub subsequently grown to around 16 courses in market so far. And to date, we've enrolled nearly uh, 400 students. And as part, um, courses are built out in suites. So the aim is to launch around 50 courses by the end of 2025 and really drawing upon the academic strength and breadth across the university. So without going into every single course we offer, we offer um, things as wide academically as Jason's uh, course in accelerating organizational innovation to Sue's course in functional and neuroanatomy. And then we also run a number of engineering and design courses, product technology road mapping, um, delivering sustainable infrastructure, and a number of business essentials courses as well. So leveraging big data for business intelligence, design thinking, um, intercultural communication, et cetera. Our student feedback, we're really proud of. It's been consistently high with over 96% of our learners describing their overall course experience as good, great, or excellent. I'm now going to um, ask the panel a few questions about their experience. Um, Laura, Dominique, Dominica, I think I'll ask you this first. What do you think are the benefits that online education provides? Laura. Dominica, I'll, I'll jump in first <laughs> um, and then we'll hear from you if that's okay. I, 
I think from my perspective, it, it does two things. One, from a, from a learner point of view, it creates flexibility in a way that maybe hasn't been there before where they can access a course information um, in their own time, you know, busy professionals needing to work out a schedule. That's really, really valuable. And I think that's a huge benefit. On that same line and kind of a, a wider way to look at it is I think it's connecting, you know, like people like Sue and Jason, these um, leading experts in the field, to professionals in a way that just would not have happened before. It's it's a way for them to actually share the message and the knowledge that they have. And I think that's a huge benefit as well. Um, so you have the flexibility from the learner side, but you also have the uh, experts and, and the knowledge base there, and they're able to connect with that too. Dominique, I'd love to hear if you think I'm on point with that and your experience as well. Yeah, absolutely. That was my first point, flexibility. So <laughs> I uh, work in a startup company, so I don't have much time. But because this was very flexible course, I was able to manage around my work time. And if I plan correctly, uh, yeah, basically take a course from anywhere. Meanwhile, I actually took a holiday as well. So I was doing it on the holiday too, which just because it's online enabled me. So the flexibility and connection with, yes, the tutors and also uh, my colleagues, uh, my classmates, basically. I had the classmates from Czech Republic, from South America, and it, we still in touch. So th that's just great too, that we can from all over the world, you know, meet here and be interactive with each other. So yeah, basically that any with anybody anywhere. <laughs> uh, Thank you. That's that's great. I do think um, online education provides a different level of flexibility in a number of different ways. Um, partly the the length of the courses that you can you can offer um, so easily, but also you know how many people can come and take time out of their lives to spend um, even six weeks in Cambridge, let alone a year for a full master's program. So thank you for that. Um, the next question I'm going to ask is how universities can best respond to the needs of both employees and the workplace. And Jason, I'm gonna start with you here, please. Yes, thanks, Anna. I think that universities have um, a duty, not only to educating students coming in externally, but also supporting their staff internally, whatever personal development may look like. You often see that their career development offices that are very much focused on the students, as opposed to what happens to the career development of the staff themselves. And I think that online education is a key component of that because it allows you to maintain your day job, but also upskill in the process. Not everybody has the opportunity or can afford to stop what they're doing and become a full-time student. So in a way, it democratizes the ability for universities to spread their knowledge and give access to all. I think it's also an excellent opportunity for additional platforms for employees. I think it's great that you know Sue and myself and others have an opportunity through Cambridge Advance Online to be able to engage with new students in a different way, new um, international access mm -hmm. in a way that Dominica highlighted. Mm -hmm. And that is a net benefit for the university as well. Thanks, Jason, that's great. I love the idea of online education democratizing universities. Um, <laughs> Sue, what would you like thanks. to add to this? Yeah, thanks, Anna. I, I would agree with everything Jason's just said. Um, I would also say for functional neuroanatomy, the course I'm running, um, there's often a very strong personal drive to improve, for professionals to improve their skill set and their knowledge and their understanding, uh, rather than it necessarily coming from their employer. So there's very strong elements of continuing professional development in medicine and in research. And uh, so providing an opportunity for these very busy individuals, as, as Dominica was saying, you know, incredibly busy schedules, um, to, to do a course that will not only help them personally, but then obviously then benefits their employer, um, as well as their colleagues, and in the case of medical professionals, their, their patients as well. So I think the universities do need to provide these opportunities for people to go on learning. People who may have been students in Cambridge or other universities didn't have the opportunity to take particular courses in their initial training and want to come back later and, and, and update or refresh their, their training. It's, it's absolutely essential for continuing professional development. 
Thank you. Um, and I think that's partly why our health sciences courses have been so popular to date, because, you know, the university, their original university curriculum can't cover everything in, in yeah. great depth. So mm -hmm. being able to come back and take a deep dive into a particular area yeah. is, is really great. Um, Dominique, I'm going to ask you firstly, how did uh, doing a Cambridge Advanced Online course enable you to reflect upon your own professional role and develop skills? Uh, so in my case, it was very, uh, it had a big impact because I basically just started my role two weeks before I, uh, two months before I uh, started to take the course. So it improved uh, my professional skills, hard skills, the te whole theory, basically, because it's so relative to what I'm doing and also soft skills. But uh, mostly it's, I like that at the beginning of the course, our tutors, they, we were introducing ourselves and they were trying to find the best way how to accommodate the level of education or the, you know, uh, that we need. So uh, in my case, uh, I wasn't yet uh, that expert or professional in the area, but my tutor still uh, made me feel comfortable in the level of knowledge that I had. So the theory the information knowledge that i got from there it's huge i was able to learn faster within a work as well uh by creating by even uh, finishing the reports or assessments for the course i was basically doing what i would do for weeks at work so yeah it helped uh definitely with the knowledge and with very quality information and also for me to be more confident mm -hmm improve my leadership skills, my communication mm -hmm. skills in the area, uh, my negotiation skills, and also showed me what I need to work on still for the future. So that's great. Thanks, Dominica. Um, Laura, would you like to add to that from a learning design perspective? Yeah, it's really nice to hear your experience on that too, because it's what we hope for when we're designing. Um, so I, I love hearing that. When we're designing, we have three main uh, a, kind of an a tenets to an approach that we take. And the first one is that it's professionally centered. So basically people mm -hmm. don't have a lot of time, right? And it needs to be relevant. The information, information needs to be really clear. Um, so we always design courses with that in mind. Also this rigorous application so basically space where you can apply just like you you have done in, in your professional context you can actually apply the course as you're going through it and it's directly um applicable in a way that that helps you learn so that's great the third bit is the connected cohort and i love that the tutor helped kind of scaffold and build you into that and worked with you um you mentioned you know connecting with fellow um learners as well in the cohort before that's exactly what we're looking for as well that social learning element where you do have a tutor that's helping to guide you that's helping to bring the information to life in a different way and also to connect with your peers and to learn from them mm. so yeah, you're a living example, uh, Dominica, <laughs> about what we want to happen there. And it's it's great to see that. Thank you, Laura. And uh, Jason, I just wondered if you also wanted to add your thoughts here from a course lead perspective as well. I think it's just been, as I said earlier, an incredible journey for me personally as well, because I, I never thought that I'd have the opportunity to apply different skill sets that have developed over the years in this way. And one of the great things about being able to teach a course on entrepreneurship is that it's applicable to so many different people and they don't realize that anybody has the ability to be an entrepreneur. There's so much focus on entrepreneurship and the idea that you have to go off and start your own new thing. When in reality, the majority of us want to help the organizations we're a part of. And this has been a fantastic platform and opportunity for us to be able to reach out and engage with those students who think, okay, well, how can I be even better at my job? How can I contribute even more to helping my organization achieve its aims? And I think that's brilliant. And I'm really looking forward to building out my personal network through the course as well. I can anticipate that a lot of the students will keep in touch and over time we'll build up this alumni networks, thinking of alumni as a theme today. And that's something really powerful because that's a, there's a knock-on benefit. Yeah, I love that. Um... 
Thank you. And I'm just going to ask a question and I would encourage the audience to start posting uh, Q&A questions in the chat if you if you haven't something that you'd like to ask one of, or more of our panelists. We're going to ask a slightly broader question now around should the University of Cambridge be offering more online education provision um, or should it always be seen primarily as a college slash campus based university? Um, so I'm going to start with you here. Thanks, Anna. Yeah, I, I feel very strongly that the answer is that it should be offering more online education. And I think that, that Jason touched upon this earlier, but I, I feel that there's so much expertise in the university. It's world renowned for its research and, and, and every one of my colleagues has so much passion for teaching. That shouldn't be available for a small number of people yeah. for a small amount of time in their life. That should be available to everyone who comes through this university for their whole life and for a whole wide world of people who otherwise wouldn't get the opportunity to tap into that. And that will benefit the university as much as it will benefit those, those people. So I feel very strongly more online education. Great. And uh, I think it goes back to Jason's early point about democ helping to democratize yeah. universities. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Um, Jason, what's your, do you agree with Sue on this? I 100% agree with Sue, and I also think it's about diversity and inclusion mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So the next bit to democratization is think how many people would love to have access to that knowledge that Sue described so well, yeah. but for whatever reason they cannot, whether it be yeah. financial needs, geographical, you name it. Yeah. So by democratizing and indeed inclusing our base of diverse and inclusive um, educational programs, it can only be a benefit both to the student and to the university in the long term, because this is the future. We need to adapt and change with the times. And it's all about online. So let's embrace it instead of kind of drip feeding it. Yeah. It should be the main course of the university. Yeah. And personally, I think it, you know, it doesn't replace this the, you know, wonderful yeah. on-campus provision. It simply yeah. augments it. A hundred percent. Yeah. And Dominica, do you from a student perspective, do you feel yeah. do you like Cambridge to be offering more courses online or? Yeah, I like your point when you say about replacing. I don't think it should replace no, because no. I think everybody should experience once in a lifetime at least the campus experience and no. just be proud that you're walking down the hall and so. But um, yeah, I think there should be more when it comes in, in addition uh, yeah. to the campus experience. Uh, I myself am already looking for another one to attend. So I love to learn and I would love to be able to stay learn something new all the time so yeah I'm very excited for more and I would love to see more and I saw that you were adding some more already so it's great yeah excellent thank you um I've actually got a question from one of the audience members that was posted in the chat so I'm going to now um take that one instead and um the first question is what do you see as the main challenges for employees, employees looking for workplace development. Dominica, I'm gonna uh, ask you what you think your response so I, first. Uh, from my experience, it would be balancing time still. Mm. Like it really is uh, about or yeah, about planning or planning to plan even. Like uh, for me, what I'm trying to do is plan that on Friday, I plan for the rest of the week how I'm going to schedule how much time I will allocate to certain tasks. Mm -hmm. So that time balancing, it's the biggest challenge, I think. But uh, yeah, with planning, it could be solved, definitely. Thank you. I, yeah, I agree. Because it's very, there's very few of our students that aren't also working full time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, I don't know if Sue or Jason, if you have anything you would like to, to add to that point. Sue, would you like to go first? Uh, uh, yeah, I, so I, I can. Thanks, Jason. Just, just from my experience of the two runs of the course so far, it definitely is, um, as Dominica was saying, that it's about time management and finding that time. And when the learners do find the time, they really enjoy it. But I, I, I know that that is still, there are so many pulls on, on their time, obviously their busy work schedules, family schedules and so on. So I think carving out that time and saying, I'm, I'm going to use that period of time 
to do this it is a big commitment to make isn't it but once you make it I think it's so rewarding so so maybe about finding a good time in the year since the courses run four times a year maybe certain times of the year are slightly less busy so so yeah. rather than rushing into it picking the best time yeah. for you I would just add that there's a piece about alignment. Something we've been looking at in our course is how do you align your personal development with the aims of your employer and of your organization? Mm. So I think often it's challenging for students to be able to go to somebody and say, to carve out that time, okay, I'm not doing it in the evening. Maybe they have childcare, maybe they have personal reasons. Yeah. They want to do some work during the day and then convincing their employer, mm. well, this is actually going to benefit you as well. Mm. So yeah. it's one yeah. of the things I'm conscious of is how can we as instructors help them make that argument of like, here's the benefit to do as an individual, but here's a an, an benefit to the organization. Mm. So please allow them to, or help them carve out that time. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point, I think. Um, Sue, I'd like to come back to you again and ask from, because you've done so much face-to-face um, -face teaching as well. So from a course, the perspective of developing this, this course in functional neuroanatomy online, how have you had to adapt to the online learning environment and what benefits has it brought to you? Presumably you were used to teaching online during the pandemic, but you know, this is a sort of slightly different um, learning design approach. Yes, uh, so I did have to adapt an existing course that used to run in person pre-pandemic to an online course during the pandemic for my existing cohort of students. And I would say that was a very positive experience and why I was so excited to then have the opportunity to bring it to online education. Um, and in terms of adapting it, because we work with this incredible team of learning designers, actually that wasn't difficult other than the work we had to put in. And I learned so much about te teaching and, and, and learning and, and how to do it properly. The courses are so beautifully set out with incredible expertise behind them. So um, I think the benefit it brought to me is that I've learned so much from doing it. And I think I'm a better teacher now. Um, and uh, yeah, engaging with, with more students has definitely been a benefit for me. That's fantastic. Um, another question that we've got in the chat is, do you think that post pandemic, the demand for online learning will continue to grow? And I think I, you know, I think maybe I can um, speak to that question a little bit. So firstly, I, I would like to say that the, the global market for online short courses is sizable. You know, it's, it's estimated to be $6 billion enterprise in 2022, and it's growing exponentially year on year. Um, I think that the University of Cambridge should really be able to take advantage of this, but also speak to the needs of its audience. You know, we've got the brown power and academic strength to be a really significant player in this market. I feel that everyone has got used to, um, you know, doing things online. And, and we've all been doing things online via e-commerce for years and years, but now we're getting used to more, much more used to doing education online as well. So I think it's, it's only going to grow uh, and speaking from our own course experience you know our, we're just about to go into our September cohort um, student numbers have grown over 100% across our courses since the last cohort run in June and we expect them to to continue to grow so for me yeah it, it definitely seems like the demand is not is not going away no Sue. And I don't know if everyone can see this or just me, but there is a question in the Q&A. Great. Can, can everyone see that or is that targeted? Yeah, thank you, Lucy. Yes. I, I can yeah. see there's a question from you. And great question as well. Uh, it's around sharing biggest learnings post-pandemic about employee engagement in a new hybrid world. Um, Jason, can I start with you on that one? So can you repeat that, Anna? So in the new hybrid world. Yeah, sorry. It's uh, Lucy's asked if we could share our biggest learnings post pandemic about employee engagement in the new hybrid world. So biggest learning would be the there is a personal side to it. 
as opposed to just the knowledge side mm. for me. I think that too often, historically, we focus so much on the technical, on exactly the hard facts, the data, the analysis, et cetera. But there's a personal side. Why are you personally motivated? How's it relevant to you? What are your motivations in life? What drives you? That is also part of this. And I think that's been a big learning for me. We've all had to adapt to a very stressful, globally stressful situation. And it's put into sharp focus what we each individually mm. find to be our North Star, our drive. Mm. Uh, for most people, it turned out it's not about the money. That's kind of you know, incidental to be able to survive. There are other motivations there too. So one of the biggest learnings for me is that in any kind of online course or in-person course, you need to take into account both the technical hard facts, but also that softer side. Mm. Yeah, that's great. Laura, I don't know if you want to come in here with your thoughts on this. Yeah, I mean, I think I think we're in a major transition, uh, even in culturally what we're seeing is acceptable. I mean, online learning and distance learning is not new, but the platform <laughs> that we've all had to go on is. And I mm. think we're still seeing the ripple effects of that. Um, so I think mm. it's yeah, I don't really know, to be honest, what, you know, how employees will interact with it. But I think there is an acceptance that was not there before because people have been forced to use maybe some platforms they haven't seen. And they're thinking, oh, I, I can actually do this in this space, you know, this mm -hmm. digital space that maybe they didn't think of before. So I would say that has definitely changed. I'm not sure wider behavioral trends and things like that from there but it would be really interesting to see i think there's a curiosity to keep exploring like we've seen so don't see it stopping anytime soon sue dominica um, do you have anything you'd like to add here mm, for me it's maybe the biggest learning it's the possibility of it that it's possible to do it, it's possible to do it while full-time working if you have a right support if you want to do it and yeah, in my case, I like what Jason was saying that one of the challenges, just going back to a question, could be to, for your employer to understand uh, mm. that you want to carve out time to do this. Mm. I was lucky enough that my employer right away offered at least four hours a week that I can take while I was mm. supposed to work, uh, actually do the course. So uh, mm. it wasn't a challenge for me, but I can see that it definitely can be challenged for somebody else. But uh, yeah, I guess the possibility of it, manageability. Mm. Yeah, great. So yeah. uh, everything been said already or do you have anything? I, I think so. Ahead? I think I think one thing I, I'd like to add is I think for the pandemic, it was a time for many of us to reflect on what our priorities were and how we wanted to work and balance our life work. And I've noticed a lot of my colleagues have changed that balance and changed their priority. They're still very passionate about their work, but they don't want it to be the only thing in their life. Yes. Um, and this this op offers an opportunity to change direction a little bit or to um, carve out time for yourself to do things that you might not otherwise have done. Yeah, I think that's true. Um, I'm going to ask a slightly different question, um, which is, around, uh, based on your own experience, what tips could you offer our audience in terms of mm. making the most of their online learning experience if they're interested in potentially taking an online course? Sue, you're on video, so I'm gonna start with you again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we've all said quite, quite emphatically that time management is essential. Um, and it's certainly my experience has been that for the professionals who, who do a little bit at the start of the week and, and over the week, get more out of the course than the ones who leave it till the last minute. And then we can't help them if, we get, if they get stopped right before the uh, end of module tests and so on. Um, but, but maybe my tip would be to really participate in the online discussions with the other professionals who are on the course. Some, some people like to kind of work alone and I totally respect that, but I do think that a huge part of this, and we've heard from, from Dominica on this, that, that engaging with other people on the course and learning from them is, is so valuable and powerful. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Laura, that probably leads in from to the, to a to this advice from a course design perspective and I know that, that you're it's it's very mindful about how you do create that cohort experience do you do you have any other tips in making mo the most of the online learning experience 
The biggest one really is time. Um, it's again, like Sue mentioned, you know, people are different and, and different things work for different people. But I think the most valuable thing you can do is carve out some time and know your weak points. Like, hey, yeah. I struggle or I procrastinate or, you know, mm -hmm. we all have these things. And it's kind of how yeah. you learn, really. It's how mm -hmm. you actually progress through a learning experience, which a lot of people actually don't have good reflection on. So thinking about that, and I think that really does set you up for success. I mean, being open to speaking with the tutors, engaging yeah. in discussion forums yeah. is also very important. But I think there is quite a bit of self-reflection that you do need to do as you go through the course. And we do try to promote that in the course with reflective workbooks and times when we you know, ask the learners questions that are built into the design. But there is a motivation factor as well, which Jason kind of touched on at a previous point too, that really does mm -hmm. matter. Yeah. Dominica? So for me, the main one is for everybody is the time, the planning. Uh, I uh, on the weeks that I didn't do so good that I would like to, it was because I didn't plan for those weeks. Mm -hmm. So really plan and then going back, maybe why I couldn't finish everything as I wanted to. So kind of debriefing at the same time of my past, that way I learned. Uh, mm -hmm. Then I guess understanding also that even if I couldn't do everything 100%, it's not just me, like my yeah. other colleagues by talking, mm -hmm. oh yeah, I, I didn't finish this assignment in time or I, you know, mm -hmm. just by accepting that oh, we, you don't need to be perfect. Mm -hmm. That's for me yeah. personal, because I like yeah. to finish everything. I like to read everything. I, I like to mm -hmm. have notes. And if I don't do it, I feel like I'm failing. Oh. So, but the tutors were great for this as well. It's just, it's good. Even something it's, yeah. Uh, just the support and I guess the last one would be enjoy it <laughs> when I felt like I'm overwhelmed with assignment or and work combined I just stopped and talked to myself and said I get to do it it's, it's not like I have to because I don't no. have to I don't have yeah. to take yeah. the course nobody I get to learn I get to yeah, yeah just better myself so I guess mm. yeah really yeah. enjoy it I, it's it is a good, great experience yeah that's brilliant to hear Thank you. And Jason, you're about to launch the first run of your course. Um, what would be your top tip for, for learners <laughs> making the, you know, the most out of it? Building what um, Dominica said, have fun. <laughs> you know, it has to be something where I want them to feel like every week, oh, I'm looking forward to coming yeah. on this course. I'm looking forward to do the next thing. That yeah. is paramount because um, to you know, Dominica's point, you're choosing to do this. No one's forcing it on you, no one's mandating yeah. it. So you've got to make it fun. I'd also say that the learning is only beginning with the course. It's kind of seeding that foundation for them mm -hmm. to go to the next level. So I'm hoping that they'll take forward what they've learned and then apply it in the real world and continue to learn. So as opposed to thinking, okay, I've made it through my eight weeks, I've done my thing, I ticked the box and I've forgotten about it. It's like, no, my aim, our aim as course leads, uh, my other course leads speaking on their behalf is to make sure that our students go away feeling that not only have they learned, but this sparked something inside of them, yeah. and that they've got practical tools and knowledge that they do actually em employ or deploy rather in their work. And the other thing I would just say is just a shout out to um, all of the developers and designers who helped us build this course. I had no idea just how much effort it took to set up a course like this. So I hope everybody mm -hmm. who takes it appreciates that <laughs> there's a lot of thought and effort and months and months of planning and discussion yeah. to these. And I'm just hoping that as they go through, they'll, they'll understand that we have multiple modes of learning. There's videos and live sessions and online texts and supplementary material to make sure that however you learn best, there's a mm -hmm. medium for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, makes me want to do all the courses as well as well as help <laughs> with the design. Um, yeah. We've got another question from, uh, the following question really from yeah. Lucy in the chat. Um, wondering if we have any advice on how to find out what your employees' preferences are, what they, when, what they decided when, and if they took time out. And we do actually have an end of course uh, survey, Lucy, where we do ask some of these related questions. I think, um, some of the feedback that we've got so far is that most people don't take time out to do these courses. They are fitting it in, into their um, their everyday schedule. And I think for some people, they 
maybe didn't appreciate that it does take the amount of time that we say it takes. I think people were mm. hoping that maybe they could skim it almost a little bit um, sometimes and mm. be able to do the course in fewer hours a week than it says. So most of our courses take between six to 10 hours of learning a week. And that's so, you know, primarily we can get into a depth of learning that you simply can't get from what, you know, from a just sort of two to three hour session. Um, I think that some other feedback that they've given is that they really appreciate the live sessions, the weekly live sessions. Um, so the fact that the these live sessions, you know, at least some of them are actually run by the people that designed and developed the course like Sue and Jason and not um, purely uh, run by the tutors. The tutors also do an amazing job and they are mm -hmm. you know, academics mm -hmm. them, themselves generally. But um, the fact that the same people who designed the course then come and help deliver the course is a real uh, is I think it's a real USP for our courses because many online courses do not operate in in that way and yeah this the live sessions get amazing feedback but that mix of you know self-paced work and then mm. complemented by an hourly live session has proven to be really popular and then lastly I think Laura was talking about earlier about this connected cohort experience we do really put a lot of effort into the sort of course design phase of making this a, a course where you know we could try and we try to some extent to replace the the um, the face to face networking that you you know it's so easy to get from a face to face course and it's much harder to get from an online course so you know we're very mindful about our design in that way to make sure that pe the the cohorts do get to know each other um, mm -hmm. and can stay in touch as Jason was saying you know you create an alumni network. Um, and you stay in touch with your cohort after you've finished. Oh. Great. Yeah, I can add to it that yeah, great. I definitely <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> just waiting that uh, I did take online courses before, but I felt very isolated. But with this one, uh, this style mm -hmm. of learning, I actually felt very much involved. So as you said, the online session in my case were favorite as well. We get what we kept WhatsApp group. So we're always in touch. So the discussions mm -hmm. were great. And yeah, I definitely felt involved. So there was a human aspect in it as well. So it was a hybrid. It wasn't, I didn't feel isolated. I mm -hmm. had very regular responses from my peers, from my tutors. So that was great. Wow. Yeah, that's excellent. Um, does anyone else have anything they want to, to feed back on this one? Okay. Um, I'm not sure we have any more questions now, so um, we can finish a little early. And I'd like to thank all my panelists for joining us today and giving really insightful answers and to, all, to the audience as well for joining us. Um, we'll hope, we hope that you'll uh, take a look at what we're offering, um, advanceonline.com, and uh, see if there's a course that, that suits you. But if, if not, then we were just grateful that you came to hear uh, and listen to what we had to say in this space. So thank you to everyone that joined us today.